Even with a price increase, the Galaxy S24 Ultra proves its worth as one of the best phones, setting new records for a flagship phone in key areas such as battery life, screen brightness, and processing performance. Add to that the slew of helpful Galaxy AI features packaged with the phone, and it's a powerhouse that will actually save you on time. Pre-orders for the Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra are available right now with its general release date set for January 31. The $1299 US dollar starting cost of the phone comes with 256 GB of storage while upgrading to the 512 GB or 1TB models will cost $1499 US dollar and $1659 US dollar respectively. They're certainly not cheap, so it's not the most Samsung has ever charged for a non-folding phone. Remember, the Galaxy S20 Ultra launched at whooping $1399 4 years ago. Still, that's probably little comfort to someone in the year. And now trying to justify paying $100 more for the Galaxy S24 Ultra over the iPhone 15 Pro Max. Samsung Galaxy S24 pre-order deals take some of the sting out of the Ultra's price, with Samsung offering an upgrade to the next tier of storages at no extra cost. You can also get credit from the Samsung by trading in your current device for a lower price on the S24 Ultra. Look quick and you might not notice the design changes Samsung made to the Galaxy S24 Ultra. Most notably, the new model ditches its predecessor's armor aluminum frame for titanium one which bolsters durability and in this case leads to a lighter package as well. On paper, the Galaxy S24 Ultra's 8.22 ounce width doesn't seem like a tremendous difference over the S23 Ultra's 8.25 ounce weight, but the phone just feels less dense this time. Another change pertains to the end of an era for the series, its curved screen. I am on the fence about this change because the curved screen of past ultras gave the phone this sleek looking aesthetic. Instead, the S24 Ultra adopts a flat display that hugs the edge of the titanium frame. Samsung's reasoning for this change pertains to the S Pen, the flatter panel makes it less likely for the stylus to fall over the edge. But then again, I end up using a case with my older Carvia Galaxy S Ultra that prevents this such thing from happening. The last and subtle change involves 42% slimmer bezels according to Samsung's math. I only see it with the bottom portion at the display since the rest of the bezels appear very similar to the Galaxy S23 Ultra. One of the disappointments that will probably go under the radar is how there is no significant change to the S Pen. I was really hoping for Samsung to add something new to the fold here, seeing that the S Pen is one of the features that makes the Ultra distinctively different from everything else. Overall, I don't love or hate the design, but at least there are far more color options to choose from versus other phones, like the titanium violet version of my review unit. On top of that, there are several cases at launch that sprinkle more utility to the phone, like the preview window of the S View wallet case. Over the years, I have been less concerned about the resolution of a flagship's display, mainly because today's QHD Plus resolution is more than adequate. That's exactly what the Galaxy S24 Ultra is packing, a 6.8-inch QHD Plus Dynamic AMOLED 2X display that is rich in detail, offers outstanding viewing angles and vibrant colors that makes YouTube trailers like Furiosa jump out at me as I watch it. But of course, all that wouldn't mean much if the new doesn't beat its predecessor in the brightness department. Samsung's no different with the Galaxy S24 Ultra, which the company claims to have a rated brightness of 2600 nits. I am never one to believe the hype because these ratings often don't reflect their true to life behavior, which is why I place more emphasis on our actual testing. This is where it gets interesting because the Galaxy S23 Ultra reached a peak brightness output of 1225 nits in our display benchmark testing. It's an improvement to 1353 nits with the Galaxy S24 Ultra in our testing when displaying HDR content. That's fantastic and I didn't have any issue watching YouTube clips or playing my mobile games outside 
with direct sunlight beating down on me. Samsung kept the S24 Ultra's display refresh rate to 1 to 120Hz, which is what I expect from a flagship today. Still, Samsung missed an opportunity to increase that refresh rate to perhaps 144Hz to further differentiate itself. I am well aware of Samsung's history of throwing novel features into its phones. Remember the eye scrolling feature of the Galaxy S4? I wouldn't think so, which proves my point that sometimes hyped features don't turn out memorable. There's very little doubt of AI permitting into everything in our lives, our phone included, which is why Samsung's talking a proactive approach in giving its users access to new capabilities with Galaxy AI. Strangely enough, many of these AI-assisted features are in collaboration with Google, which raises the question of who's really making the innovations here. There is also a possibility that these AI features could change with Samsung's website disclaimer saying Galaxy AI features will be provided for free until the end of 2025 on supported Samsung Galaxy devices. Different terms may apply for AI features provided by third parties. I have been able to test out all of the included Galaxy AI features on the Galaxy S24 Ultra and here's what I think. Circle to search. Much like everyone, I find it annoying having to switch between Chrome and say Instagram when I am trying to look up a type of cat from one of many cat Instagram accounts I follow. Circle to search eliminates the need to do this because a long press of the home button initiates the feature and I proceed to circle the object or subject with my finger. Then the corresponding search results page will pop up as an overlay. The best part? I never have to leave the app I am using to search, plus it works in every app. For example, I saw a photo posted by a friend on Instagram of a card that I didn't recognize. With Circle to Search, with the Galaxy S24 Ultra, I am able to select while still being in the app and that it shows me search results on what it could be. In another example, I took a photo of this statue of Brilliant Park and Circle to Search is able to not only tell me what it is, but also its location with Google Maps details. Chat Assist Built into the Samsung keyboard, Chat Assist can help you craft just the right message using the right tone. Think of it. It like an assistant who can tailor your messages so you sound professional when typing our emails to the boss or a playful tone when chatting with your closest friends. It works as advertised and I have even chuckled on numerous occasions at chat assist's professional tone because it makes me sound too formal. While I do appreciate the options for the tone of my messages, I don't see it as a feature I would use frequently. Live Translate is one of the more practical Galaxy AI features I have tried out. It turns the Galaxy S24 Ultra into a translator during phone calls and supports 13 different languages out of the gate. This wants a perfect showcase for the power of artificial intelligence because it's doing translations in real time with minimal delay. I tried it out with my colleague who happens to speak Spanish. One thing I notice with Live Translate is that you have to be as basic or formal with your conversation because it gets tripped up when I sometimes speak too casually. There's a slight latency that might make your conversation sound confusing, but I like how the translated conversation is displayed on the S24 screen. You can't talk super fast either because the AI needs the time to understand what's being said and then translate it to the appropriate language to the person on the other end of the line. While it's not perfect, Live Translate provides a good foundation to making real-time translation more practical. Live Translate also works in third-party apps I use, such as WhatsApp. The only other phone previous to that this offers a real-time translation in third-party apps is Google's Pixel phones. So I am excited 
that the Galaxy S24 Ultra has its own version. This saves me the hassle of copying and pasting my messages to another translation app, plus it will also translate my messages as well. Without question, the biggest controversy circling the Galaxy S24 Ultra centers around Samsung's decision to ditch the 10x optical zoom camera of the S23 Ultra for a 5x optical one. That one key spec will cause people to think the new camera setup is technically inferior, but bear in mind that Samsung trades in the optical range for a higher resolution sensor, a 50 megapixel sensor instead of a 10 megapixel one to be specific. The Galaxy S24 Ultra remains a formidable camera phone consisting of a main 200 megapixel camera boosting 60% larger pixels, a 12 megapixel ultra wide camera, a 10 megapixel telephoto lens with a 3x optical zoom, and that new 50 megapixel telephoto camera with a 5x optical zoom we mentioned above. That camera can still offer 10x zooms by taking a picture and then zooming in as the resolution drops to 12 megapixel. Samsung says that this approach on the S24 Ultra can deliver the same optical quality performance as its predecessor, which doesn't surprise me. We have seen this executed on other phones with excellent zooming results like iPhone 15's 2x telephoto zoom. Before I detail the new telephoto camera and whether Samsung made the wrong decision, Decision, I will explain how the phone other cameras perform under different situations along with side-by-side -side comparisons against the S23 Ultra and iPhone 15 Pro Max. Starting with the main camera, I can't see much change over the S23 Ultra. Details are plentiful, colors are vivid, and the S24 Ultra's HDR performance does nicely to even out the highlights and shadows. I'm perfectly fine with these results, but in the back of my mind, I was hoping for a wider separation from last year's model. Compared to the iPhone 15 Pro Max, it comes down to personal preference. In the short of the outside auto forum, the iPhone's HDR performance is at peak display when I look how the wooden panels of the front doors pop up out more. The S24 Ultra also appears to have a colder color temperature as well. Here are some camera samples and you can see it. There is a lot to say about how Samsung's approach to artificial intelligence with the Galaxy S24 Ultra. From my experience, the Galaxy AI capabilities are fairly intuitive to use and save me a lot of time exactly what AI is supposed to do for us. Features such as circle to search, generative edit, instant slow-mo, and note assist all feel polished, while others such as live translate could benefit from more machine learning. Regardless, the Galaxy S24 Ultra proves that AI is here for the long haul. Yet, I am a little disappointed that the Galaxy S24 Ultra camera performance doesn't have the same dramatic improvement I have seen from past updates. Samsung's choice to drop the 10x optical camera for a 5x1 is 
is the most glaring and controversial change, a downgrade I hope doesn't happen ever again. But despite this, the S24 Ultra has smart improvements to its processing power and battery life, two key areas I look at with any phone. The Galaxy S24 Ultra is not just a better, it sets the benchmark for all other phone releases in 2024. Knowing that, the increase in price to US$1299 does complicate matters a bit given that I feel the majority of its AI features are practical, combined with its performance and battery gains, it's still worth getting the Galaxy S24 Ultra if you are in the market for a super phone or upgrading from a handset that's a few years older. Thanks for watching, see you in the next one.